Hi, my name is Phil. I like to talk about politics. In this video, I'd like to discuss a newly released economic analysis, which takes a look at the impact of both Brexit and the COVID pandemic and concludes that for most sectors uh, of our economy, if one doesn't get you, the other one will. Though the most important conclusion is that the government are willfully failing to do what they could to mitigate the damage. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So in terms of sectors, there are those who will be hit hard by COVID. We've already seen many of those. There are those being hit hard by Brexit. Again, we've seen the effects of that as well. And in the Venn diagram, there'll be quite a lot of sectors hit by both. And some, of course, will be outside both. And the analysis threw up some fairly common sense conclusions about industries that were badly hit by COVID. So obviously sectors that relied upon close human contact, such as leisure and hospitality, for example, suffered most from the pandemic. And then sectors that can cope better from that due to, say, remote working being possible, such as science and office based services, they fared much better during the pandemic but then the report makes clear your problem becomes Brexit because leaving the transition period at the end of this year without a free trade deal means trade barriers for goods and especially services. So those service industries that coped largely with COVID restrictions will be hardest hit by Brexit because World Trade Organization rules don't really give much in the way of a safety net for service providers. And services, remember, are the bulk of our trade and we're about to enter the wild west of global trade without any agreement. Then there's the government support that is being pulled according to a strict timetable very very soon, a couple of months, before Brexit kicks in, just a few months before Brexit kicks in and at a time when a second peak of Covid is very likely to begin emerging. We're already starting to see the groundwork for that beginning now. Uh, Labour have been calling on the Chancellor to at least offer an extension of the furlough scheme for sectors hardest hit by the pandemic. In other words, a targeted response to it. But the government continue to take their one size fits all approach to the crisis. Now, of course, this could change. You know, after all, the government's current plans are going to hit quite a lot of workers very, very badly, especially in constituencies with new Conservative MPs. They are likely to threaten to join Labour in defeating the government over the issue if Johnson and Sunak don't do something, forcing yet another humiliating clown da climb down from them again. Did I say clown down? That should be a word, particularly used in relation to Boris Johnson. Climb down. Another thing that the report talks about is impact assessments. The old impact assessments. So obviously, in order to manage the economy, the Treasury has to carry out regular impact assessments, analyses of how different realistic future scenarios will affect the economy. You know, you, you, you think about, OK, well, this may happen, this may happen. Let's model it all and let's see what the result's going to be. That helps the government plan ahead and avert disaster. The report notes that the government promised to plan their Brexit preparations using impact assessments. However, there hasn't been a wide ranging one carried out for some time. The report states that only 10 sectors are covered at the moment. Now, this is because, of course, the overall picture is very bleak. The last government impact assessment, uh, which was not intended to be made public, but, you know, someone very kindly leaked it, noted that Brexit would cost us £2 billion a week. Now, that is not something that Boris Johnson once shouted from the rooftops. So he doesn't allow further analyses to take place. The Treasury have, well, Michael Gove, Boris Johnson, both the past and former Chancellor have all said, no, 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 we're not doing impact assessments for Brexit. We don't think they're very reliable. They have done them for everything else, including COVID, because that's not their fault. But Brexit, which is their fault, oh, no, it's not reliable. But it's, it's reliable for COVID. Yeah, maybe. But not Brexit, no. Hmm. Um, so there you go. I mean, obviously they've had, they've allowed some in, limited impact assessments, presumably in sectors that are resilient to Brexit. Maybe, you know, they're fine letting the Treasury carry out an impact assessment on, for example, jelly deal stands. Now, the report says this on the matter. 
This is a quote. This makes the evidence too scant to adequately guide policymaking and it is unsurprising that the new policies that the government has announced in its Brexit plans, such as the tariff schedule published recently, have little justification on why certain policy objectives have not been chosen. In other words, there's no real explanation for their scattergun approach to policy. Now, it very much echoes the views of the haulage industry that I was talking about earlier, was it yesterday, uh, in terms of planning for customs checks, where they describe the government as being clueless and complacent. But what this report makes really clear is that pressures on business from COVID and from Brexit are very different. It isn't the case that some sectors will be hit by both in a double whammy, um, of course, some are, and the others will emerge from both. Essentially, if one doesn't get you, it's very, very likely the other one will. And this is why, according to the authors of the report, detailed impact assessments need to be undertaken urgently. Without that, the planning cannot possibly be targeted, which means it cannot be effective. You're just hitting and hoping. Which brings me back to that Labour's call for targeted support this autumn. Now, <clears throat> for the hardest hit, for the sectors that, you know, either still can't get up to speed, even with the removal of many of the restrictions, or it takes too long to get up to speed, or seasonal, so it's the wrong time of year. Because it sounds a madness to me that the government wouldn't do that. And I know you'd ordinarily think of Conservative governments only ever providing help to millionaires. Oh yeah, there's, there's no end to what the Treasury can provide to bail out millionaires but not ordinary workers. But they did implement the furlough scheme. And yet we know why they implemented the furlough scheme. It's because there were a hell of a lot of middle class voters being hit with the threat of unemployment. And um, they didn't want to deal with those numbers at the ballot box next time. So, but for whatever reason, they're fine with the general policy in the current economic and political climate. So why not just keep the scheme for certain sectors if they don't want it, you know, a, an overall rolling program still because they think too many people will take advantage when they don't need to? OK, um, just for certain sectors, ones there you know that they actually can't cope at the moment. Like I've already described, um, and I'm just thinking to myself, is the reason they're not doing this? Because we've already seen the impact. In fact, someone told me just today or yesterday, that at their workplace, half their colleagues have already been given redundancy notices because the furlough scheme is now winding down. And, and what is left of it, employers are having to start making contributions themselves. So employers were largely OK keeping people on because they weren't having to pay their wages. They had to pay people who would sort out the paperwork, but the government were covering the 80 percent of their wages. Now employers, like the government, I think it's going to be covering 60% and employers have to stump up some of it. Um, at that point, now it's costing them. It's not costing them the full wages, but it's costing them to keep workers at home if they can't get them back in. So at this point, of course, an awful lot of companies are really evaluating how many staff they need to keep on. And, and with some staff, if it's a case of can we let them go because we'll easily be able to get some staff back at a time when we need them. In other words, we don't want to, or we can't afford to, to, to pay them anything. Um, so people are now getting those redundancy notices because the government haven't put that safety net in for targeted sectors. And I'm thinking to myself, is this just because the government don't know how to target it? You know, because is it, you know, their failure to carry out detailed analyses because they would have to take into account the impact of Brexit, any sort of detailed economic analysis, even covering the next six months, has to take into account Brexit. And they don't want to do that, which means they're flying blind. But they don't carry out those full impact assessments that highlight the damage of Brexit at a time when it can still technically be averted. But then I'm thinking, but they can't hide it forever, because sometime in 2022, we'll get the actual figures for economic activity in 2021. Now, yes, I know what you're screaming at me. The government will just say that the massive hole that's opened up in our economy was due to coronavirus. And absolutely, and absolutely a load of people will believe it. But then it's easy to ask a couple of questions. One, why is that hole so much larger 
than in 2020 when the pandemic did its worst? And two, why is that hole so much larger than that of our European neighbours? Whereas if the government tried to get all of the information and analysis that it could, it would at least be able to mitigate some of the damage. Failing to do so is simply negligent. It is conscious, consciously abandoning whole sectors of the economy and the jobs and living standards that go with it for a political crusade that serves only those wealthy enough. And this is what gets me. We're talking about the people who are so wealthy that the only benefit to them even is that their ethereal bank balance goes up. It doesn't actually change their life. It doesn't change it one iota. They will do exactly the same every day of the rest of their life. So I would argue it doesn't even benefit them in any tangible sense. And my hope and expectation is that the government will be absolutely savaged for this by the opposition. Obviously, they'll get some practice with COVID because it's the same basic system. Because this is the key part of the report. The combination of COVID and Brexit is devastating our economy. It would always do that anyway. But the government are sending us out into a hurricane with a tatty old umbrella because they are not doing the best they can to at least mitigate. So there's the situation. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.